Let's get into the advisory now and some analysis on the proposed superannuation law changes on unrealized gains in superannuation accounts exceeding $3 million. Stephen Goldbrunson from Morgan's joining me now. Stephen, just talk us through what this all means. Well, it seems like the government's creating a solution to a problem that doesn't exist to the, to the same extent as others. So the Div 296 is basically a new tax on unrealised capital gains in balances in excess of three million. So this is, I guess, purposely designed for those inherently large superannuation balances which were born out of the, uh, the Howard era and looking to, to basically view superannuation as a retirement, not as a wealth, um, the end point of wealth accumulation. So to use it to fund a normal retirement in, in well, in income terms, not to do above that. So I can certainly understand the, the thought process that went behind it, but I can see that there are a few inherent flaws with it. Well, how does it affect the average Australian though, Stephen? I'm guessing not that many people are looking to retire with $3 million in super. <laughs> well, but that's, I guess that's the, the ability to, to look into the future. At the moment, you're quite right. Uh, very, very few people will be in a position where this will impact them. But we, we do modelling on this uh, nearly every day. So we, t we see a 30-year-old and we model what their superannuation is going to be like in at the age of 65 when they retire. The problem with Div 296 is it's an un... Well, there's no inflation link to it. So $3 million today is what um, is going to be the same $3 million tomorrow, except in real dollar terms in say 30 or so years time, three million is not going to be worth as much. So you're going to find that more and more Australians get encapsulated. And we're incredibly surprised that uh, our standard client that comes with the average level of income is going to be encapsulated at this, uh, on these rules come retirement at age 60 to 65. So more of us are going to be impacted than you think. More impacted than you would think. Okay, how then does that affect the, the broader economy and, and society? Well, the, the problem is, uh, the, the reason why I like taxation, I like mathematics in general, is you can apply a rule and it, it works uniformly. So it doesn't work with, with bias or with prejudice. So with my thoughts on this, it's a little bit, a little bit different. There are so many different implications in which an idiosyncratic event can create financial hardship for, for someone, or at least test their, their, their resolve and test the whole premise of superannuation. Without being too wordy about it, a superannuation structure should be ability to be managed with certain expectations. So an example of this is, let's just say going into 30th of June, we have a market rally, like what we've seen in 2024 financial year. So we get our portfolios doing 16 or 17, even 20%. Then from that perspective, it locks in the, the balance as of 1st of July. Mm. And the unrealized capital gains are, are locked in at the new tax rate of 15% in addition to the, uh, the tax would have been paid on realized earnings and, uh, and, and dividend and distribution. So the problem with that is what happens on the 1st of July if the market suffered a downturn like what we saw in 2008, 2009, if that was to occur, you're paying tax on potentially unrealized gains that don't exist anymore. Yeah. So the broader implications would be, can it be managed effectively under all conditions or is this going to be idiosyncratic, mm. which can cause more problems for it's due to solve? 